Hi, my name is Avinia. This is Peter. Welcome to Games Made Easy, a channel where we learn board games quickly and easily. Today, I want to teach you and give you tips on how to play Sheriff of Nottingham's first and second editions. It's a great game where the better you bluff, the better you will fare. It's easy to learn and the playing time is around 30 minutes. It's a great social game. What I love about this game is how the active player changes every turn so everyone gets the chance to be the evil sheriff, while the rest of the time you're trying to smuggle contraband. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and clicking the like button, it helps a lot. In Sheriff of Nottingham, you play a merchant going to the market to sell your apples, your bread, your chicken and cheese. From time to time, you might try to smuggle some contraband right under the sheriff's nose to make more money. The problem is that the sheriff is there all the time and stopping everyone that comes in. So you will have to bribe, bluff or charm your way out of it. The player who passes the most goods and contraband makes the most money and wins the game. Now, to set up the game, give each player a merchant stand board with the matching pouch. Apart from the profession, there are five areas marked on each player board. These are to keep the cards you will successfully bring to the market. On top, you'll keep contraband cards face down. The other four areas are for specific food types. The gold and silver numbers are respectively the king's and the queen's bonuses for the player who has the most and second most of that good at the end of the game. Then give each player 50 gold in 20, 5 and 1 gold coins. You randomly pick one player to be the sheriff, but all players, including that sheriff, will receive cards. All the cards show the good itself and they come in two main categories, legal goods and contraband. If there's a green border, it's a legal good. A red border shows a good you're not supposed to bring to the market, according to the sheriff. And if it also has a gold banner, it's a royal good. As you can see, they are super powerful versions of the legal goods. The gold coin in the top right corner is the cost of the card when sold in the market, while the number at the bottom right is the cost of penalty if the goods are confiscated by the sheriff. Shuffle all the cards and give six to each player face down. Also put five cards face up here and another five there. These are the discard piles. Finally, place the remaining cards in the middle. This is the draw pile. Place this in the middle of the table for easy access. Now we can start the first round. Each round comes in five phases and it's all indicated on the player board. In turn order, each player can discard up to five cards face down in the hope of getting better cards. You can check the discard cards and pick some of the top cards you want from either pile. You can top up from the middle draw deck at the end. Since one can only declare one type of good, it's often safer to have a lot of one single type. Once you have six cards back in your hand, you select one to five goods you'd like to bring to the market. In this case, I wouldn't bluff and would place five legal bread in the bag, leaving the royal bread for later. Lock them into the bag. At your turn, you tell the sheriff what's in your bag. You can only declare one type of good and you cannot lie about the number of cards in your bag. So in this, for instance, I could say, Sheriff, I've got five apples, but I would prefer to say the truth and say, I've got five bread. Note that until now, the sheriff has not done anything in this round. Now it's his time to shine as the sheriff needs to decide whether the player is telling the truth or not, whether to inspect the bag or let her pass. It's now a game of bluff, influence and bribery between the active player and the sheriff. The sheriff wants to catch contraband, but also avoid falsely accusing a player. The player can offer money, legal goods, or contraband if you had any on your merchant stand, even goods in your bag or future earnings, although those future earnings are not really binding unless they are in this bag. In this case, I will offer only two gold to entice him to open. If the sheriff takes the offer and lets you pass, that's the end of that face and he will pass on to the next player. Now, negotiations can be done up until the moment you hear this, at which point there's no more negotiations, and now the sheriff has to verify the contents of the bag. If the player did not lie and was being honest, and the bag has exactly what was declared, 
the sheriff must pay gold to the player equal to the penalty on every legal good in the bag. Legal goods are then added to the merchant market board. In this case, the sheriff would pay 10 gold to the player. If the player was lying and the bag does not have exactly what was declared, in this case, three cheese, then three things happen. Any goods that you did declare truthfully are allowed into the market. You place them on your merchant stand face up. Do not collect gold. Any goods that you did not truthfully declare are confiscated. The player has to pay the cost of the confiscated goods as shown at the bottom of each card. That money goes to the sheriff. The sheriff takes all those goods and places them on one of the discard piles in any order he chooses. The current sheriff will pass the standee to the player on the left. That player will be the new sheriff the next round. Now all players, except the player who's just been sheriff, will replenish their hand up to six cards from the draw pile. Now I'll explain the difference between the first and second editions. They're almost the same, except that the second edition introduces some of the rules of the Merry Men expansion of the first edition. Now you can play with a sixth player and the black market. The sixth player is pretty straightforward, and when you add it, you should add the two sheriff's deputies and the booty. The two sheriff's deputies replace the sheriff. At the beginning of each round, draw the top two cards of the six deputy cards. This round, these will be the deputies. The other four players will be merchants. During the inspection phase, the two deputies act like the sheriff, but they don't always have to agree. However, if they do agree to let a merchant pass for a bribe, they will place the gold on the booty tile. If both deputies agree to open the merchant bag and the merchant was telling the truth, then each deputy pays half of the penalty using its own gold, not from the booty. If the merchant was lying, the money received is placed on the booty tile. If only one deputy wants to inspect the bag, he will collect the bribe he receives or pay the penalty on his own. At the end of the inspection phase, the two deputies evenly share all the gold and goods cards placed on the booty tile. Leftover gold or cards must be discarded unless the two deputies agree on how to distribute them. You draw the top two cards of the deputy deck and then you're ready to start the next round. Now let's have a look at how you play with the six black market cards. These six black market cards are contracts which you score as soon as they're fulfilled. Place them face up in three piles like this with the card of higher value on top. After you receive your merchant bag from the sheriff, you may claim a black market card and get even more gold for your contraband. Reveal the matching contraband cards and discard them before taking the corresponding black market card in your contraband pile. You can only claim one black market card per round, but you can claim all of them in one game. Once every player has been sheriff three times in a three player game or twice in a four or five player game or deputy three times, finish the turn and the game ends immediately. Now it's time to count your money, including the contraband and the bonuses for whoever sold the most of each good. Coins in hand, one for one, legal goods, contraband value, King bonuses where the player with the most of each good, including the royal goods, collects the golden number in coins. In case of a tie, add the king and queen's bonuses and divide by the number of tied players, rounded down. Queen bonuses where the player with the second most of each good collects a silver number in coins. In case of a tie, divide the queen's bonuses by the number of tied players, rounded down. If you've played with them, also score the black market cards you have in your contraband pile. The player with the most gold wins the game. In case of a tie, it will be the player with the most legal goods. And if you still tie, it will be the player with the most contraband. Now, my tips to win at Sheriff of Nottingham are, it's tempting to pay the sheriff to turn a blind eye. Just be mindful of how much this is really bringing you because it's easy to spend too much. It's important to go early and deep with some of the goods because the bonuses you get from the king and queen can decide the game. While you might want to skip the real goods for the first few games, once you start playing with them, you'll realize how competitive they are, especially with the king and queen bonuses. It's really important when you're sheriff or deputy to keep an eye on the merchants when they go to the market and when they fill up the bags. When you play deputies, try to work together. Sometimes it might be having a different position to hedge your bets. 
So that's how you play Sheriff of Nottingham. It is a fun game and there's nothing quite like that out there. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is in the video description. We'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.